Hi guys, welcome to this revision summary video looking at everything you need to know on the atom and electronic configuration. We're going to start off with the atom then. So what you need to be able to do is tell me where the subatomic particles are in the atom, what their charge and what their mass is. So if we start off with electrons, nice and simply they go around in energy shells or orbitals. In your nucleus, which is the part in the centre, you have protons and you have your neutrons. Now that number, the number of protons and neutrons in the centre, that is your mass number. That is where most of the mass of the atom is. So on your periodic table, you will have two numbers. For example, 12 and 6 for carbon. That number at the top, the big number, is the mass number. So that is the number of protons and neutrons. Some periodic tables will have that number the other way around, but for the GCSE in the UK, the big number should always be up at the top. So we know the nucleus has protons and neutrons. What we now need to know is what the charge is. So you need to remember all protons are positive, all electrons are negative, and all neutrons are neutral. And then you need to know the mass. Now, we spoke about the fact that protons and neutrons make up the mass number, so they are the ones with the mass. So protons, we say they have a mass of 1. Electrons have no mass, so we can say 1 over 1835 if you want to be specific, or just 0. And then neutrons, as I said, have a mass of 1. So what you also need to be able to do is work out how many protons, neutrons and electrons any atom has. So the bottom number on our periodic table, or the small number if yours is different, is the number of protons. So the smallest number is always the number of protons. It's also, for any atom, the number of electrons. The mass number, as we said, is the protons and neutrons added together. We know the protons, therefore you can work out the neutrons. So you take the mass number and you take away the atomic number from it. In other words, take the little number from the big number. So for example, aluminium, we've got 27 protons and neutrons added together. The 13 at the bottom tells us our 13 protons and also our 13 electrons. So to work out our neutrons, it's 27, take away 13, which gives us 14 neutrons. The next section is going to have a look at electronic configuration. So how are those electrons arranged? So it's really important to remember that the electrons is the small number. So if I've got lithium here, it's the bottom number, so I have three electrons. Rule number two, the first shell can only hold two electrons. Rule number three, shells two and three can hold eight electrons. You won't need to know past that, so just remember two for the first, eight for everything else. So let's have a look at an example. So we're going to go with lithium on the right hand side. We know that two electrons can go in the first shell, that's our second rule. I have three electrons, so I'm going to put two in there. Now of my three, I've used two, so I've got one electron left. Now my second shell can hold eight, but I've only got one, so I put one electron in. And that's my electronic configuration. If I wanted to write it, it would be 2.1. If we have a look at aluminium, so I have 13 electrons, it's the small number. Two on the first shell. How many have I got left? 11. How many can go in the second shell? Eight. So I can put 8 in there, 11 take away 8, how many have I got left? 3, so I've got 3 remaining and they can go on my third shell. So my written electronic configuration would be 2.8.3. Now this electronic configuration is very much linked to where the atom is on the periodic table. So rule number 4 is the number of electrons in the outer shell tells you the group that the element is in. So this one here, we have got six electrons in the outer shell, therefore it's in group six. The number of shells also tells you what period it's in. So although I've got three shells drawn here, only two of them are occupied, therefore it is in period two. Now the ideas about the atom haven't always been exactly the same. It's changed quite a lot. So what you need to know is how Dalton came up with the original ideas for the atom and what it's like now. So we start off with Dalton then. He thought that every single atom was indestructible. He thought there was nothing else inside them. And he also said that all elements were made up of the same type of atom. So we now know that that part is right. If you have an element, they are all the same. However, we now know that the atoms are not indestructible. They contain 
protons, neutrons and electrons. Now the first person to figure out that Dalton wasn't exactly right was J.J. Thompson. So he did an investigation and found out the mass of rays leaving a glass tube was much, much lighter than atoms were meant to be. So this first of all proved that Dalton was wrong. Atoms aren't indestructible. There are smaller parts to them. And it helped to discover that electrons existed. He later described this as the plum pudding model, where the atom itself was a positive pudding and then it contained negative electrons, which is your plums. And then later on came Rutherford. Rutherford fired in 20,000 positive particles, so protons, alpha particles. He fired them into a gold sheet. Now, most of those went straight through. However, a few of them refracted and a very, very few repelled. So what this proved is there was a nucleus and that nucleus was tiny. Now, of course, today we know the nucleus contains protons and neutrons and we know electrons go around in shells in orbitals around the outside. And that brings this revision summary video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.